just one step into the hallway and I could already hear all kinds of whispers going all around. Um, what happened? Did you forget, Sandra? It's Monday. <sighs> oh, not again. Who's the unlucky victim this week? Dorothy! It's Dorothy! <laughs> Look what embarrassing deed she's done! So, it was a photo of the resident mean girl, Dorothy, on a date with some old rich guy. Ben and I had zero interest in those kinds of things, but these kids on the other hand... Hey! There she is! This was the third Monday in a row that our school had turned into this gossiping chaos zone. Why, you ask? Three weeks ago, out of nowhere, a bunch of random QR codes appeared stuck to some of the lockers. Curious, we scanned them and got access to this mysterious blog by someone called Quiet Night. They said they wanted to expose the true face of this prestigious school. So, every Monday at 2am, they would reveal someone's dirty secret. And the first secret belonged to the beloved basketball team captain, Lewis. Turns out he flunked the last match on purpose so the rival school that his secret girlfriend attended would win. At first, everyone doubted it, but then someone found the girlfriend's Twitter where she posted a celebration photo. So, there you go. Everything became clear as day. Lewis immediately lost his captain title and the entire school cancelled him. While everyone was still buzzing with that, already came the next Monday secret. It was Mr. Worthing, our popular math teacher. His classes were known for their top performances. But as it turned out, he had always accidentally leaked the questions to his students before every exam. The rumor reached the principal and he immediately had people look into it. Unfortunately, it was true, so Mr. Worthing was fired. And as you've heard, little Miss Dorothy was the third unfortunate victim. To be honest, she definitely hadn't been the nicest girl. She's a nightmare to all the new kids especially. So when her shameful secret was revealed, everyone seemed to be somewhat satisfied and talked about it non-stop. My BFF, Mary, was no exception, as Dorothy was a rival for her queen bee status. At lunchtime, we arrived at the cafeteria, but weirdly, nobody lined up to get lunch. They were all looking around at something. Turns out Dorothy was here too. She's sitting alone at a table. Not wanting to miss an opportunity to taunt her longtime rival, Mary rushed straight over there. What's wrong? Your bald lover didn't take you out to lunch today? As soon as those words came out of Mary's mouth, everyone burst out laughing. Benjamin and I had to drag Mary out of there right away to avoid any calamities. What are you guys doing? I'm not done yet. This isn't cool. Let's just stay out of it. What? She deserves it. You know the clearest what a horrible person she is, Sandra. Or have you forgotten how she picked on you? Well, it's true. I was also one of Dorothy's victims when I just got here. Ben and Mary were the ones who stuck up for me. That's also how our precious friendship all started. Ever since then, we've been the iconic trio of the smartest kids at school. Pretty sweet, huh? However, the recent dramas have undeniably affected our studies. It's like students are coming here just to gossip and they keep chatting in class, making concentrating extra hard. Monday mornings became the biggest event in school. Everyone looked forward to it, guessing who's the next chosen one, as the embarrassing secrets continued seeping out. How Justin looks cool chewing his gum all the time, but he actually does this to mask his bad breath problem. Hardworking Julia bought her essays off the internet. The parking lot car spray painter turned out to be none other than Goody Two Shoes Brandon it became apparent that any one of us could be next. So people started to panic, praying that their name wouldn't be mentioned. Every Monday morning, I arrived at school to see everyone looking like zombies, cause they'd all stayed up all night waiting for the quiet night's post. The mystery blogger had to be one of us to know all kinds of personal secrets like this, so everyone became extra cautious of each other. It's a mess and this has to stop. We needed to figure out who the quiet night was and stop this. But Mary wasn't convinced. How are we supposed to find them? There's zero clue. Stop wasting time. Let's just focus on studying, Sandra. There's no way they didn't leave any trace. We just have to stand up together. Nope. If you want to, then just do it alone. What's wrong with you? Weren't you usually the first one to avoid dramas like these? Because we could be next. So what? I'm not scared. I have nothing to hide. Then she left in a sulky manner. Mary might not care, but I did. I spent the night trying to piece the clues together when my phone had a pop-up. Ugh, was it 2am already? Who could it be this week? I pressed to see. It's Mary! Oh no, is it about 
that thing? Yep, that's it. The secret about Mary's background has been revealed. Her parents aren't successful business owners, and of course, Mary is not a rich mistress like how she always acted like either. I accidentally found out about this when I saw her bargaining about the rent in front of a small house in the suburbs. When I asked Mary why she had to lie like that, she just got all defensive. What do you know? If people knew the truth, they would laugh in my face. I, of course, didn't want to hurt Mary, so I always kept it a secret. <sighs> but now, everyone has found out in the worst way. The next day, Ben and I saw Mary walking toward us, looking exhausted, while everyone's eyes were on her. Yo, how'd you think she's able to afford those flashy outfits? Didn't that blogger say she always wears cheap secondhand clothes? Pathetic. Hearing those words, Ben and I gave those kids death stares and rushed to get Mary out of the crowd. But she suddenly snapped at me. Sandra, you're behind all of this, aren't you? Huh? What? Mary, what, what do you mean? Why would I do that? You're the only one who knew my secret. If it wasn't you, who else could it be? You are the quiet knight. What she said quickly caught everyone's attention, and I felt everyone's curious eyes fixed on us. Mary, that's not right. Remember, it's Sandra who called on everyone to find the culprit. That was clearly a distraction to fool everyone. Mary then continued explaining her reasonings for why she suspected me. The blogger only ever typed in lowercase just like I always did, and she also mentioned my habit of staying up late. To make it even worse, the next Monday, that blogger suddenly stopped posting, making everyone certain it was me. So I was instantly labeled a traitor to my friends and even a germ who raised hatred among students in this school. Everywhere I went, people badmouthed me, and no one except for Benjamin wanted to sit by me at lunch. I wasn't even allowed in the library anymore, as everyone would be talking about me which would cause disturbance. Worst of all, the teachers hated me too. One time in math class, I volunteered to solve a difficult equation, but all I got back from the teacher was, Sandra, if only you just used your intelligence for studying, not for messing up other people's lives. Then everyone heartlessly laughed at my face. The tension was draining me, so I went out to take a breather. After recess, I got back to the classroom to find a box in my desk drawer. Oh no, wasn't it the love letters I'd written for Lewis? I mean, yes, I used to have a crush on the basketball captain, but it was a long time ago, and I never sent the letters. How come they are all here? I sure had hidden them in the corner of my locker. Is it the creepy quiet night messing with me? Ugh, that's enough. I gotta unmask this jerk ASAP. Hmm, who could it be? Who had the ability to spy on people undetected? I was trying to figure this out when a smug-looking Dorothy appeared. Geez, look at her. Can't believe she's the coward who destroys what she couldn't have. Too bad for Lewis that he ended up involved in this. Oh, such a pathetic little girl. Doesn't even have the guts to send any of the letters. <laughs> oh my god. Did they just say letters? What letters? What on earth are you talking about? There's no mistaking your handwriting. She showed me bunches of photos of my letters. Oh no, did she take revenge on me because she thought I was the snitch of her dating news? Not leaving me a chance to explain, they just laughed and continued mocking me. I couldn't face going to school and being tormented for something I didn't even do. So I faked being sick to stay home for a few days. But it's been a week and I still didn't feel better. Suddenly, there was a strange sound by the window. Turns out, it was Benjamin. Sandra, please stop hiding away. You can't let them beat you. You're better than this. What else can I do? Everyone's convinced it was me. Follow me. I know someone who can help. Now, I was sitting in a cafe with Benjamin, and Max, an IT genius in our school. Benjamin insisted this guy could help identify the anonymous blogger. After just a few minutes of checking the IP, Max has been able to track it down. But, huh? It led to Mary's place? Huh? No way. This makes no sense. I gotta talk to Mary. Calm down. Don't say a word about this to anyone for now. Just let me take care of it. I had no clue what Benjamin was planning. He said he would help me clear up the case, but nothing happened for days. Until now, he insisted I'd come to watch this basketball game. What's the point? It just gave others a chance to mock me further. While immersed in my thoughts, suddenly I heard someone's voice on the loudspeaker. It was Benjamin. Hi everyone, I'm sure you guys are tired of the Quiet Nights blog by now, right? 
Yeah, at first, I just wanted to entertain you all a bit after boring hours of studying. But I guess it's no longer fun, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry then. I'll stop now. Thanks for tuning in. What on earth is he doing? Now, the entire sports hall was buzzing. Is it really you? Benjamin was about to reply when Mary jumped out. No, it can't be you. Stop wasting time protecting Sandra. How could you possibly know where her love letters were kept? Or about Dorothy's secret? So, you tell me. Who knew those things then? Mary looked taken aback and confused. Then Dorothy appeared. It's her. It's her who gave me Sandra's locker key. Wh what So it really was Mary. I was still hoping that Ben's friend made a mistake somewhere instead, but... Why, Mary? I don't understand. Of course you don't. You're not in my shoes to judge. Turns out at first, Mary created the blog for the sole purpose of getting revenge on Lewis for being a cheater. He always told Mary that he wanted to date in secret to avoid peering eyes, but it was just an excuse so he could sneak around with other girls. Which is why this was news to both Ben and me. How about the math teacher? What has he ever done to you? He had no work ethic, so he deserved it. I always studied really hard, but he said that girls like me only ever cared about our appearance. He still thought my good grades were from copying these two. And you, Dorothy, it serves you right for the arrogant habit of bossing newbies around. Then she blatantly left the crowd as if she had nothing to do with the school drama all this time. I tried to chase after her, but I was stuck amid this angry crowd. There's still something she hasn't explained yet. The following days, Mary still went to school, but all of the other students isolated her. Benjamin and I tried to approach her, but she went out of her way to avoid us. So, after school, we decided to follow her. We saw her going to the cafeteria, but not to buy things, but to help the lunch lady clean up. Mary, stop being like this. You've still got a friend in me, but don't you think I deserve an explanation to? She then finally sat down and talked to us. Mary would have stopped after exposing the three people she hated, but when she saw everyone eagerly waiting for the news every Monday, she found it interesting and continued to bring up other embarrassing things. But then, when things started getting serious, she panicked and looked for someone to blame, and that person was me! Because I was the one who first came up with the idea of tracking down this anonymous blogger. Furthermore, she was angry with me for finding out her secret. Envious because I got better grades than her, and jealous because I was closer to Ben than she was. Mary admitted she felt outshined and left out. So, you decided to expose your own secret you kept for so long just to frame me? Do you hate me that much? No, no, Sandra, it's not like that. I'm really sorry. As for that secret, I had tried to act like a hot girl from a rich family just to be worthy of that jerk Louis. But since I know he's a bad guy, there's no point of keeping that secret anyway. Ben and I leaned over and hugged her, saying it was all okay. As long as we are honest from now on, we'd be able to sort everything out. After that, we helped Mary clean up the messy tables in the cafeteria. And can you believe it? The lunch lady is actually Mary's mother. She was the one who unintentionally told Mary all the petty secrets that everyone gossiped about while getting lunch. Mary has always hidden the fact her mom's the lunch lady, but after being exposed and boycotted, she gave up and decided not to try hard for the popular girl title anymore, but just to be herself. I knew that this was hard for Mary, but deep down, she has a good heart, else she wouldn't have befriended me when I first started at this school. Living up to the expectations of being the school's it girl must have been exhausting. It's been a semester full of drama, hasn't it? Phew, lucky it's almost over. Now we're in a hurry to revise all lessons together to prepare finals week. We still compete with each other a lot, but this time it's fair and square. The three of us already decided that whoever gets the lowest score will have to take the other two out for dinner. Free food, here I come, as I definitely am not going to lose. <laughs> I was grabbing a book out of my locker when some guy's shout startled me. Hey everyone, the results are over here! Oh, it's just the results of the Mind Buzz, our annual high school general knowledge competition. People, what's the rush? Don't we all know what it'll be like already? See, nothing's changed. That's my name, there, the first place of Willowmere High, as always. And of course, what came along with it were endless praises from everyone. Way to go, Millie, you're our school superhero. Oh my gosh, you're amazing, I'm so jealous of you. Yep. Hi, I'm Millie. 
the girl who always aces every school contest and is therefore adored by the other students, all the teachers, and the principal. Later that day, as soon as I stepped out of art class, Alice, my excitable best friend, jumped out of nowhere and squealed out, I just found this really cool place. We have to go there right now. No chance. I have the final round of the blast from the past contest tomorrow. I mean, history is my forte, so I'm sure to win, but I still want to cram in some last minute studying. Come on. We all know you'll win anyway. You even said that yourself. So let's just hang out for a little, please. Fine, but only because I'm an amazing friend. Hmm, okay, I have to admit, this place was actually kind of cool. It's an adorable cafe hidden at the end of a street corner. But wait a minute, what's up with that sticker on the window? Isn't that the Leafmore High School symbol? No way we're setting foot in that taboo place. I tried tugging on Alice's arm and gesturing for us to leave, but she stood her ground and replied, Come on, Millie, we have to try their croissants. All the food bloggers are talking about it. But this is Leafmore's territory. Look! So? It's not like anyone will recognize us. Before I could comprehend what was happening, she dragged me inside. Oh well, it seems like we've gone too far to draw back, so I may as well sample what this place has to offer. Why was our order taking so long? And what was with Alice? Ugh, how many selfies did one girl need to take? I was clenching my fist to stop myself from anxiously fidgeting when two boys walked towards our table. Hey, cutie. I've not seen you in here before. What grade are you in? Oh, no. How should I answer this question? I quickly turned away, pretending to rummage through my bag to avoid his gaze. But they still didn't leave me alone, as the other guy said, Wait, this girl doesn't seem to be from our school. Are you? Oh, snap. Did he recognize me? My skin turned clammy with nerves and I thought I was going to throw up. Then suddenly a voice rang out. Sorry I'm late. Have you been waiting long? Then he plonked himself down next to us. Seeing that, the two guys left. Phew! But who is this guy? Do we know him? Oh my god! Evan, it's you! Mmm. Is that the new Calvin Klein cologne? It smells amazing on you. Huh? Evan? As in... Evan Summers, the top student in Leafmore, a.k.a. my biggest competition in tomorrow's contest? To Alice's excitement and my puzzled look, Evan just lightly smiled, then got up to leave. <sighs> He's indeed a cold angel. What? All he was to me was arrogant. You're probably wondering what the deal between Willowmere and Leafmore is, right? They're the two biggest high schools in this town, but like the same poles of magnets, they repel each other. The two schools have been rivals since forever, competing with each other from academic achievements to collective activities. In competitions organized by the town, such as marathons, Halloween decorations, or even cooking contests. And of course, the students from both schools despise each other so much that we have boundaries in town. For example, this cafe is only for Leafmore students, while only Willowmere students are allowed in that bookstore. Breaking these rules could lead to outright carnage. The schools take this super seriously. Hence, there's even a rule saying we can't interact with each other. And dating is a real no-no. You see, as the top student in Willowmere, I can't let anyone find out I've stepped foot in Leafmore territory, as if they do, my life won't be worth living. And also, because of my number one position, I have a responsibility to help my school win as many prizes as possible. And this history contest is no exception. I anxiously waited for the host to announce the results. And the last 20 points go to Leafmore High School, which makes them the winners of today's contest. From the other side of the hall, the Leafmore students erupted into applause, and they all charged at Evan and hugged him. Seeing the arrogant Evan with a triumphant face made me even more upset. Congratulations, you were amazing! Alice, we lost. Only by five points. Second place is still good, but it was me who was defeated by that Evan. Poor Alice is still trying to keep her shy smile at me. I didn't want to take it out on her either, so I quickly left. The next day I was walking along the school corridor, minding my own business, when I passed a group of students gossiping about me. Poof, she defo lost the quiz on purpose. Yeah, her question was so easy. Everyone knows that the first US dollar was printed in 1862. Why were they saying such mean things about me? I tried my best to ignore their jibes and distract myself with my phone, but... 
What is this? Someone had uploaded a picture of me, Alice, and Evan all sitting together in that cafe the other day. Oh no. And we're still, from this angle, we all looked kind of close. Furious, I went to leave, but Polly, this annoying girl, blocked my way and mocked me. Millie, if you don't like this place, you could have transferred schools. Losing to leave more on purpose is just embarrassing. I did no such thing. Not that it's any of your business. I hurried away from her and her smirking friends. The problem is, it seemed like the entire school had seen that picture and concluded that I'm a traitor. At least things couldn't get any worse, right? Wrong. My bad luck continued when I got my English lit essay back. A B minus. This can't be right. I never get anything lower than an A. Ever. I was checking through my test when suddenly there was an announcement on the speaker, asking me to come to the principal's office. Millie, you're usually such an excellent student, but I've received some unpleasant news about you recently, and your grades are slipping significantly. I could only stare down at the floor and mumbled, I'm really sorry. I'd never been scolded by the principal before. This was the worst day of my life. Miss Garcia was silent for a moment before she continued. However, I still have faith in you, so I'm giving you one last chance to prove yourself. The town's hosting a Rube Goldberg machine camp and our school must win. Can you make that happen, Millie? I forced a smile and nodded. No problem, ma'am. The first prize will be ours. Trust me. This is my chance to show everyone that I'm devoted to this school. However, there's one teensy tiny problem. Physics is not my forte. It's all right. I just got to do my best, right? I spent the next two weeks planning, researching, and testing out ideas with my group. We finally managed to create the perfect Root Goldberg machine. It includes 15 genius steps to complete the final task. We're surely going to secure all these bonus points. Finally, the camp weekend arrived and I was super stoked to show off my team's entry. Tomorrow will be it. I'll get Willemere's name back on top again. Then suddenly, Miss Garcia tapped my shoulder and gestured me over to an empty corner and worriedly said, Leafmore's machine is highly praised by the judges. At this rate, they're most likely to win, and that'll mean humiliation for us. Don't worry, I'm trying my best. We'll add some extra magnets and springs. It's no use. The only way we'll win over Leafmore is if their entry encounters problems. She sighed, then turned to leave. Feeling deflated, I stared down at my feet. That's when I saw a pocket knife, with Miss Garcia's name printed on it, lying on the ground. I picked it up and called out, Miss, you dropped your knife! But Miss Garcia didn't stop walking or turn back, and just did a snipping gesture with her fingers. Could it be that Miss Garcia meant... Yep. Definitely. That's the only way. So that night, I waited until everyone else was asleep, then I snuck into the gallery and cut a piece of wire holding the light bulb of Leafmore's model. That should be enough. I was about to leave the room when suddenly the lights came on. What are you doing here? I... I... You just did this, didn't you? Um... Yeah? So what? Go ahead. Tell on me if you want. This is all so meaningless. Then he sat down and started fixing his model. Huh? What's meaningless? Good God, he's so full of himself. Fine then. Just you wait, Evan. I'll beat you with my own talent. Let's see if you'll still be Mr. Arrogant then. It was my team's turn, and for the first three steps, the Rube Goldberg machine worked quite smoothly. But when it came to the fourth step, suddenly the wooden slide collapsed, causing the marble to fall to the ground and the machine to stop working. We all stared at each other in panic. No, 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 this couldn't be happening. We tested it many times this morning and it had worked perfectly fine. I rushed over to check what was wrong with the machine, but I struggled and couldn't find a way to fix it. When suddenly a voice said, Let me see. I looked up. It was Evan. I stepped aside to make room for him when suddenly Ms. Garcia appeared. I see what's happened here. Clearly, Leafmore High knew the only way they'd win was by sabotaging the best entry. The whole hall started to stir, but I felt my skin prickle with unease. I didn't think this was Leafmore's doing. Look at Evan. He didn't even bother telling the judges about last night's incident. Immediately after that, Leafmore's principal, Miss Harris, said, 
Miss Garcia, you can't go around accusing us without proof. Clearly you're the one who feels the need for underhand tactics to win, not us. Then she held out her phone and circled the crowd so everyone could see. I gasped in shock. There on the screen was a picture of me standing next to Leafmore's model with a knife. Miss Harris continued. Seeing as we managed to fix it in time, we decided not to mention anything else about it. But then you dared to accuse us. The crowd glared and tutted at me, and I longed for the floor to swallow me whole. I put blood, sweat, and tears into creating our model, and now people just thought I was a cheat. The worst part was they were right. I was one. The jury went off to discuss this. Then they announced their conclusion. Willowmere had been disqualified. Immediately, Mrs. Garcia piped in. This is hardly fair. That was the action of one individual, not the whole group. I assure you that Millie is no longer on the team, so let my school continue to compete without her. I froze in shock. How could Miss Garcia do this to me? It had been all her idea, hadn't it? She'd given me the knife. The realization of what just happened hit me and I fell to my knees and burst into tears. All that hard work and for nothing. Even Alice hugging me in comfort didn't release me from my gut-wrenching, sinking feeling. Then to my surprise, Evan said, Mrs. Garcia, can you explain why I found this knife with your name engraved on it next to our model? He raised the knife up for everyone to see. Oops, in all the stress of last night, I must have dropped it. Miss Garcia turned ghostly pale and everyone started to buzz about it. I can't believe you colluded with your students to do this. You're no different from her. Last night, Miss Harris instructed me to tamper with Willowmere's model, but I refused. As if we win, I wanted it to be fairly. The whole hall once again began to stir and copped on amazed as Evan continued. I'm so tired of the petty feud between our schools. It's so dumb and meaningless. The jury went off to discuss this further and came back with a new announcement. Both schools were disqualified. It's shameful. But, well, it's for the best. We really don't deserve to be here. Oh boy, that sure was eventful. The scandal between the two schools was hot gossip in the town for days. They even brought it up at the monthly town meeting. That's when the truth came out that Ms. Garcia and Ms. Harris had history. They were in the same year at school and were fiercely competitive against each other. So, years later, when both of them became principals of the two schools, they began this whole feud war. In the end, both principals were forced to leave their positions. So, now what? Well, there aren't any dumb rules about where I can go anymore, which is good, because I actually really like it here. I've learned my lesson, and I'm never going to let anyone pressure me into cheating ever again. Peace has returned to school life, and it feels good. Oh, and as for Evan, I'm actually studying with him right now for our next Blast from the Past quiz. Only this time, I'm definitely going to beat him. Hey there. I'm Evie from Georgia. So, I look like a regular teenage girl, right? <laughs> Just you wait till you see what I can do. Kids these days are so rude and unruly. I blame the parents. There's just no discipline anymore. See, they don't even respect their principal. But no big deal. I know just how to handle them. There we go. Just a few words and the class immediately went silent. What is this, Mrs. Gardner? That trip was all we've been looking forward to for months. Thanks to everyone's disruptive behavior. Well, to be exact, thanks to the actions of you, 25 out of 300 students, no one has anything to look forward to this year. Okay, then go on, ma'am. Punish us. But why drag the whole year group into this? Other classes will definitely not leave us alone after this. Nobody likes being punished. That's why it works. Now, let's see what your peers make of this, shall we? The whole class was buzzing with, So unfair! Abuse of power! Wicked witch! Oh my! These kids, always full of energy. Go back to your seats and write an apology letter to Miss Helen, along with a promise to never misbehave again, or else. 
all of them reluctantly sat down. And there we have it! Oh my god! Who are you? I... I... Um... It's just that these unruly students need to learn a lesson for getting Mrs. Helen so exhausted that she ended up in the hospital. And so you just decided to mimic me. Well then, please inform your mum. We will have a talk about this. Here, tomorrow morning. I glumly walked home as slowly as possible. As soon as I walked through the door, mum was glaring at me. Yup, my mum is Miss Helen, the kindest homeroom teacher ever. However, the kids in her class made her life a misery which led mom to get high blood pressure and end up in the hospital. I just wanted to help her, but instead, I just managed to make things worse. <sighs> Hi, mom. I'm sorry, but I don't regret what I did. Mom started lecturing me about how it was bad enough that dad had left and her students were rebellious without me acting like a crazy person. Crazy person? She means the times when I copy the people I want to be? But that's my hobby. I inherited that passion from my father, a famous special effect makeup artist. The feeling whenever I successfully transform into someone else is awesome. And it also helps me feel connected to my dad, even though I haven't seen him in a long time. It all started when I was 13, and dad helped me dress up as my fave idol for the school festival. Dad taught me how to analyze the character and practice the disguise. Bold eyeliner, smoky eyes, contouring, plus the bodycon outfits. I looked like a real CL from 2NE1. My friends loved my new look. So over the next few years, I masqueraded into many different people, including Lady Gaga, Avril Lavigne, Miley Cyrus, and Sia. The feeling that my makeup talent was that admired and anticipated was just really addictive. Hey, is it Billie Eilish this time? Why not Taylor Swift? I love her so much. I've always done whatever I want, and always been exactly who I am. Wow, you got that spot on. Are you a shapeshifter or something? Needless to say, once I imitated someone, I made sure I got their gestures and mannerisms just right. My talent didn't stop at awesome makeup. I was trying to collect things from my locker when a stampede of students raced past me and almost knocked me off my feet. Huh? Who was that strange and rather handsome guy they were chasing? Look at him swaggering. Does he think he's Donald Trump or something? That's Xander. He just transferred here. Keep your voice down, by the way. You don't want to annoy his fan base. Poof. I'm not afraid of those way too girly girls who go crazy for boys. Huh. <laughs> no one scares you, do they, Evie? Now let's go have some granola. Leo may like boring granola, but... No thanks. I'm having a hamburger and fried chicken. Billie Eilish is not the type to turn down delicious food for health freak nonsense. Oh, there's that obnoxious Xander again. But this time he's all over Kayla, the snooty hot girl from my class. A boy approached me asking to take a selfie with me, then suddenly I heard a scream. What do you think you're doing? I turned to see what was going on and saw Kayla going ballistic at some poor girl who'd accidentally tripped over and fallen into Xander's lap. What on earth do you think you're doing? Take a look at yourself before trying to attract my man. Ugly doofus. How snobby. Did she think her beauty was that splendid to help her keep her man? But not with that empty head, girl. After a few days of research, I showed up at school looking just like Kayla. I'd perfected everything, from her blonde hair, makeup, clothes, walk, and voice. Honestly, this time I was quite nervous. Dressing up as someone I actually knew was always extra scary, especially when her friends were walking over. Wow, that dress is so chic. You really are the fashionista of our school, Kay. Come on, Xander's waiting for us on the sports field. Please, do you think I really want you around? I'm just taking advantage of you. And you. You keep following me around like a pet. It's so tragic. Are you crazy? I know you like Xander too. I see the gooey looks you give him. When I'm done with him, I'll consider giving him to you. I walked away leaving the girls freaking out. 
but I didn't say anything different from what Kayla thought, though. Right? If only she would be so frank with her friends. Now let's get to the main target. Thinking about him gave me goosebumps. I'm busy, bae. Go hang with your friends for now. He was playing Call of Duty on his phone. I was here to break up with him, but... Hang on a min. This guy had skill. I want to have a go. Since when did you know how to play this game? Hmm. He looked kind of touched that I was showing an interest. Okay, I'll wait until after this, and then we will split up. I looked for Leo, but he didn't even recognize me. Poor him. He'd been searching for Billie Eilish since morning. While Leo was complaining, he helped me quickly remove my makeup so I could go back to looking like me before anyone guessed what I'd just done. From that day onwards, Kayla's friends cut her off, so she could only cling to Xander. And from my point of view, he seemed to be tired of this clingy girl. Now even her look made him sick, huh? The time has come. I put makeup on his Kayla again and found him. I want this bag. Don't try to trick me with a fake one. Okay, as you wish. I want you to give up COD. That way you can only stay by my side. Okay, I'll follow you all day. I want to throw a party and invite the whole school. Your task is to get everyone to gather around me like they used to. If you can't do that, we'll break up. Deal. But I see everyone likes you. Right, Evie? Holy mother! Did he recognize me already? But since when? I have to acknowledge your talent. If only you hadn't shown me your charm, you wouldn't have been exposed. Well, Kayla looks like a picture, but a dull one compared to you. You have such a good eye. However, you're no different from her. Miss Helen is your mom, right? Don't be surprised. I'm a better observer than you think. Just like you. I know that Kayla was the instigator of the disturbance in the class that sent your mom to the hospital. I already apologized to your mom for Kayla's behavior. And if you want to know why I did that, it's because... I have a big crush on you. Oh my god. I didn't expect things to turn out this way. But, okay. Taking it as a slap in the face for Kayla on behalf of my mom, I still agreed to date him. The next day, I showed up again at school as Ariana Grande, simply because I wanted to. But this time, I also played another role. Xander's girlfriend. As usual, every time I dressed up as a new character, all eyes were on me. But this time, it was more epic when I walked side by side with the hottest guy in school. When Leo saw that I was with Xander, he rolled his eyes at me, then walked off. Then Kayla walked around the corner, saw us together, and started shouting at me. How dare you steal my man! You're just some pathetic wannabe! Xander took my arm and yelled at her. Evie's creative, sweet, and really funny. I want to be with her. I like her. Kayla's face dropped. Then she pointed her finger in front of him. How could you do this to me? I will get you back for this. Then she huffed off. Xander looked at me and asked if I was okay. Then he invited everyone to a party at his house that night to celebrate the fact that I was now his girlfriend. Was he serious? But whatever. It would be rude to say no, right? So that evening, I went to his party. To my surprise, Kayla was already there. So I flirted with Xander to annoy her further. Then suddenly, Xander leaned in close to my face, which made my whole body feel hot. What was happening? He... he was going to kiss me? But then he whispered in my ear, You haven't told me how you feel about me yet. <laughs> you were looking forward to this answer, weren't you? I... But before I could reply, Leo appeared out of nowhere, grabbed my hand, and dragged me out of there. Ugh! What on earth are you doing? I'm the one who should be asking you that question. What on earth were you going to say? That I have feelings for you too? This whole thing is a setup between Xander and Kayla to humiliate you. Lucky for you, I arrived just in time to overhear Kayla talking to her friends about this dirty plan. Are you done talking? Do you really think I'd fall into their trap that easily? I already know their dirty tricks. 
and I was about to tell everyone what jerks they are. But then you showed up and ruined my plan. I don't care how clever and perfect your plan is. How long are you going to continue this tiring game of dispute? They think just because they're both hot that they can treat everyone else like they're puppets. Well, I've had enough. Evie, you're better than this. I don't like this revenge-seeking version of you. Can you please just stop it and go back to normal? Leo walked away in a huff and left me out here alone in the street. I stormed home and took off my makeup. Why was Leo so mad at me? I did nothing wrong. The gentle Leo I knew never had gotten mad or even went against my will and was always the most enthusiastic supporter every time I imitated someone. What had gotten into him? I called him continuously, but Leo turned off the phone. Ugh. I felt so alone, it was horrible. Then I heard a knock on my door. Mom peered her head around it. Seeing me upset, she came over and cuddled me. It felt good having her comfort me, so I ended up blurting out everything to her. Hmm. It sounds like Leo was just worried about you. But as for Xander and Kayla... They're not worth your time or effort. Don't become someone you're not just to get revenge on people who don't deserve you. But... Suddenly, I heard rustling outside of my bedroom window. Then Leo poked his head through it. If you're not tired, then keep copying. You keep following me around like a pet. Go live your own real life. Mom and I both laughed along with him. Then I hugged Leo and told him I was sorry. It's true that pretending to be someone else is exhausting, and I must admit I was wrong to use Kayla's name to sabotage her relationships. Tomorrow, I'll find her and apologize, even though I don't want to, but I have to find a way to end this peacefully. Then, I can focus on just being me for a while, without any of the drama. Hi, I'm Diane, and I'm 20 years old. I fell in love on the first day of college, I'm not even joking. I'd promised my mom I'd focus on my studies and wouldn't fall for any boys. But one look at Brett, and I broke that promise immediately. We had an instant connection, and pretty soon we were spending every waking moment together. I can't help but think that if I hadn't met him, maybe I'd never have found out the dark secret my mom and aunt had been hiding from me my whole life. You see, my mom raised me alone, and I had no idea who my dad was. Let's just say it seemed like my mom got around, so she really didn't want me to get into the same kind of situation as her. I decided to keep Brett a secret. She didn't need to know, right? When I went home for Christmas vacation, I missed Brett so much, but I couldn't let my mom know about him, so I'd wait until she went to bed before calling him. One night, she caught me, though. She must have gone to the bathroom, and suddenly I heard footsteps— she was standing right there. I didn't know how much she heard, but I was so embarrassed. I thought she'd grab the phone from me and tell me off, but instead, she just walked back to bed. It was so weird. In the morning, she was sitting at the kitchen table grinning and said, Well, who is he then? Invite him over. Don't be shy. I couldn't believe it. I thought she'd freak out, but instead she wanted to meet him. She suggested we invited him over for dinner, as my aunt was also coming over that night. My mom and my aunt were like best friends, and had basically raised me together, so I was excited for her to meet Brett too. He took the bus that afternoon, as he was desperate to see me, and my mom said he could stay in the spare room. As soon as my mom saw Brett, she grinned at me and whispered how handsome he was. Then we sat down to dinner and started chatting. My mom had so many questions for him, and it was a bit awkward. She wouldn't shut up, and it made her seem so nosy. She asked where he'd grown up, and what his mom and dad did, and even asked for their names and stuff. Meanwhile, my aunt just sat there quietly, and then at one point she got up from the table and went out into the garden. My mom ran after her, and Brett looked at me worried. I had no idea what was wrong. Ten minutes later, my mom came in and her expression had totally changed. She went from being warm and friendly to totally strict and cold. She looked at both Brett and I and said she decided I was far too young to have a boyfriend staying over, and then asked Brett to leave. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was 20 years old. She was being so rude. So I said to her, 
Mom, why? Please, can he just stay? I was almost begging her, but she looked so serious and firm, and I knew she wasn't going to change her mind. Brett was even more shocked than me. I mean, it had been my mom who'd invited him in the first place, and now there she was, shooing him away. He quickly grabbed his stuff and ordered a taxi. I was so upset I didn't even say bye to him. I just burst into tears and felt so angry at my mom. Right after Brett left, I ran upstairs and locked myself in my room, and my mom stood on the other side begging to speak to me. She said there was something she needed to tell me. I refused to come out and instead sat on the floor on the other side of the door. I could hear my mom crying and knew this was serious. She said the reason she didn't want Brett to stay was because he was actually my half-brother. No, I didn't understand. I asked if my dad was also Brett's dad. And then I got angry. I thought my mom hadn't known who my dad was. I opened the door and I was about to start shouting at her when she told me what was really going on. I'd been adopted. Well, actually, I'd been kidnapped by my aunt when I was born. It's a long, shocking story, but basically my biological parents were this rich couple, but they were struggling to get pregnant. My biological mom had a best friend called Ashley, who she told everything to, but Ashley secretly had a crush on my dad. She seduced my dad until one night they slept together, and Ashley ended up getting pregnant. My dad was so happy and promised Ashley he'd help raise the baby, but that he couldn't divorce my mom. This made Ashley angry. She wanted my dad all to herself, and wanted their kid to become the heir to his company. At the same time, my biological mom fell pregnant with me, and when my dad found out, he quickly forgot about Ashley and tried to forget about the mistake he'd made that one night. This, of course, made Ashley even more angry, but she still pretended to be friends with my mom. When my mom went into labor with me, my dad was away on a business trip, and Ashley paid someone to sneak into the hospital and kidnap me. That person turned out to be my aunt. She did it because she was desperate for cash, so she snuck in, dressed up as a nurse, and in the middle of the night stole me away. But she wasn't cold-blooded enough to just throw me away or leave me at an orphanage. So she took me to her sister's place and told her that she'd found me abandoned on the street. Her sister, who had never wanted to get married but had always wanted to be a mom, was so happy and decided to raise me. But then a few days later, it was all over the news, a missing baby. There was an exact description of what I'd been wearing, and even a photo of me just after I'd been born. There was no denying that I was the missing baby. My new mom confronted my aunt about it and found out the truth. My aunt said there was no way they could return me as my aunt had already spent all the money she'd been paid to cover some debts. And she didn't want to go to prison, so they decided to raise me as if I really was their own. That secret would still have been hidden from me if I hadn't brought Brett home. My mom was so shocked that I'd brought my dad and Ashley's son into her home and introduced him to her as my boyfriend. As my mom told me all of this, I just sat there frozen. This was absolutely unbelievable. I felt sick. They'd lied to me all these years. And even worse, my boyfriend was actually my half-brother. My whole life was one big mess. I hate you, Mom, and I hate you too, I said to my aunt. You helped that evil monster Ashley get what she wanted, and now you've ruined my life and taken away my family. My mom reached out to hug me, but I didn't want her near me. We both just sat there crying. She tried to calm me down and get me to relax. Then she sighed and said, I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Your whole life, I've been trying to make it up to you. I thought my love for you would be enough. As for Ashley, well, I heard she didn't get what she wanted in the end. Wait, why? I don't understand. But she successfully kidnapped me, right? I wiped my tears and looked at her. Yes, sweetie, but her main goal was to become your dad's wife. But that obviously didn't happen. Then she continued. After my aunt had kidnapped me, Ashley had given birth to Brett and was so happy thinking that my parents no longer had a baby and that my dad would now leave my mom and go live with her. But that's not what happened. Yes, their dear daughter was taken away, 
but my dad still stayed with my mom and loved her even more. My dad didn't get together with Ashley, but apparently my dad had still been helping raise Brett until now. There's definitely no bad blood between them because I've heard Brett talk about his dad quite a lot. Now there was only one thing for it. I had to find my biological parents and find out the rest of the story. They deserved to know I was alive. But now, what would I do about Brett? I'd have to break up with him somehow. Hi everyone, I'm Amanda, and I'm 17 years old. This is a story about how I fell in love with my adoptive dad and the crazy things I discovered because of it. I need to be honest, as I've not had the easiest life, so when I fell in love with him, I probably wasn't thinking straight. My childhood was tough, as it was just me and my mom, and we lived in a slum in the city. My mom was pretty irritable, and she always took it out on me when she'd had too much to drink. I got used to it quickly, and hardly even cried when she did this. I just thought it was normal to be treated like this. But when I was seven, my mom got arrested for fraud and drug use, and she got sentenced to ten years in prison! I'll never forget the moment the police broke our door down and took my mom away. It was late at night, and I just screamed and cried. All I had was my mom. Without her, I was nobody. Even though she hurt me when she was drunk, she was still my mom, and I loved her so much, and she loved me too. After she was taken away, and the police said I wouldn't see her for a while, social services placed me in an orphanage. Life there was even worse than in the slum with my mom, but I told myself it was only 10 years, and that as soon as my mom was released from prison, she'd come get me, and that by then, she'd have changed and wouldn't hit me anymore. But that's not what happened. After one year, an old couple came to adopt me. They'd been trying to have a baby for years with no luck. I thought maybe this was my chance to finally have a loving home. They cried with happiness when they saw me, but the minute we got back to their house, everything went downhill. They were both quite old and strict, and immediately sat me down and went over their set of rules. It was torture. Anytime I did one thing wrong, like accidentally breaking a glass or spilling some soy sauce on the table, they'd punish me by starving me for the whole day, until I almost fainted. After three months of this, they took me back to the orphanage and complained that I was a spoiled little brat with no manners. To be honest though, I was relieved. They were old and grumpy, and we clearly weren't well suited. Years passed by, and when I was 12, I was adopted by another family who ran a small restaurant. I stupidly thought it would be better this time, and at first it was, but pretty soon they started making me help out in the restaurant, doing all their chores and even the housework at home. I very quickly realized they'd basically just adopted me so I could be their maid. But there was one nice thing about this family, their son. His name was Jose and he was two years older than me. Unlike his parents, he was actually super kind. He would often steal food from me from the kitchen and even helped me finish the chores. But one time, his mom saw Jose helping me and thought I'd forced him into it. She was so angry at me, she took me straight back to the orphanage. I couldn't believe it. After four years, they just sent me back. After those two disastrous attempts at being adopted, I thought I'd never find a family who actually wanted me. I pretty much gave up all hope and resigned myself to the fact that I just have to endure the orphanage life until my mom got let out of prison. But then, one day, a man named James came to the orphanage to volunteer, and that's when my life changed. He looked quite young, around 40 or so, and he had a kind smile. Often, I'd catch him looking at me, and it made me feel quite shy. No one had ever paid me attention like this before, not even my mom. Then one day, the woman who worked at the orphanage took me aside and told me that James wanted to adopt me. I told them I wasn't interested, and then I went to my room. Honestly, I was sick and tired of these foster families who just used me. I didn't want to go through that again. The next day, I was sitting on the swing in the garden of the orphanage when James came over. I got up off the swing and was about to leave when he asked if we could sit and talk a little bit. I was really hesitant. 
but he had such a kind face, and I felt bad being rude. He then showed me a photo of a woman and a child, and I couldn't believe how much the child looked like me when I was younger. He told me that they were his wife and his daughter, but that they had died in a car accident eight months ago, and that he still couldn't get over the loss. So he'd been coming to the orphanage to volunteer, and now he felt ready to adopt someone. Then he looked at me and said, As soon as I saw you, Amanda, I knew you were the one I wanted to adopt. I didn't know what to say. I felt so sorry for him, and I knew what it felt like to experience loss. So I told him I'd be happy if he wanted to adopt me. He was so excited, and the very next day, he came to pick me up and take me to my new home. I was quite nervous, but as soon as I saw how cozy the house was, covered in family photos, and with a nice bedroom for me, I knew I'd made the right decision. James was the perfect adoptive dad. He was polite and kind and always listened to me. He didn't make me do chores, and he didn't create a strict set of rules for me to follow. With him, I could just be myself, and for the first time in years, I was happy. He made me laugh so much. Finally, life was good. But there was just one little problem. You see, I was a teenage girl, and the more time I spent with James, the more I started to think I liked him in a way that wasn't appropriate for a relationship between an adoptive dad and his daughter. One night, he was getting out of the shower, and he'd left the door open. I saw him standing there, wearing a towel around his waist, and I couldn't take my eyes off him. I knew it was wrong to be looking, but I just couldn't stop. Then one day, he was doing some gardening, and he hurt his back. I offered to give him a massage, and he was so grateful. As I rubbed his back with oil, he said to me, Oh, Amanda, your hands are so soft. I haven't felt so comfortable in a long time. I was glad he couldn't see my face, because I was blushing like crazy. Afterwards, he offered to give me a foot massage, but I said no because I didn't think I'd be able to handle it. I liked him so much, and that night, I went to bed wondering if he liked me too. And then one night, he asked if he could read me a bedtime story. Even though I was 16, he said he'd always read to his daughter and he missed it. So I said sure he could. And then, you won't believe it, he fell asleep next to me, in my bed. I barely slept a wink that night. I just watched him as he slept and had to stop myself from reaching out to stroke his hair. I so badly wanted to tell him how I felt. But for now, this was enough. Just being close to him and getting to have a peaceful life together. Little did I know that our peace was about to be disrupted. A woman moved in next door to us. Her name was Rosa, and she was seriously gorgeous. After she'd unpacked, we went over to say hi, and straight away, I regretted it. She immediately started flirting with James, even reaching out and stroking his arm as she said, Oh my, look at those muscles. I'll need your help setting up my kitchen, if you don't mind. James just laughed and said he'd be happy to help. As we walked away, I looked back and saw Rosa checking out James, and I knew she was going to be trouble. And sure enough, after that first meeting, she kept popping up. The next day, she asked James to help her fix a light bulb, and then a few days later, she came over with a plate of muffins to thank him. She never really spoke to me. She only had eyes for James, and I didn't like it one bit. Was she trying to steal him from me? The more she hung around, the more jealous I became. Everything had been perfect until she turned up, and now I was so scared James would fall for her and I'd be all alone again. My feelings were becoming so intense, so I decided there was only one thing for it. I had to tell him how I felt. I was pretty sure he had feelings for me too. I had to act quick, before Rosa made a move. Hi, I'm Izzy, and my grandparents brought me up. It's not that my parents weren't around at all, it's just that they worked in New York, and, well, they were workaholics, so I ended up staying with my grandparents. My sister, Beatrice, or B as we all call her, lived with my parents. I don't know why this was exactly, it just kinda happened. My parents visited every Christmas and occasionally during spring break, but not having them around was normal for me. Then one summer, my parents showed up with B and told me they were moving to town and we were all going to live together. At first, this was weird as I was so used to barely seeing them, but then I decided it could be good, right? But, well, 
Living with a little sister was more complicated than I thought. It's kind of bothersome. In fact, B even pushed me, an average drama-free girl at school, into a bunch of nonsense scandals. B's a sweet kid, but she's on the shy side and she can be a bit clingy. Probably because she still needed some time to fit into this new place, so she followed me and clung on to me all day long. But I just didn't get why she had to copy everything I did. I wore ripped skinny jeans, so she bought the exact same pair. I wore glitter pink lip gloss, so she did too. I got a new phone for my birthday, and she begged our parents until they caved and gave her one too. That kind of sucked, as I'd waited for ages for a decent phone, and she got one just by nagging. She had her own bedroom, but each night she came into my room and made me tell her stories about everyone at school, as she said this would help her make new friends faster. We'd chat about school, boys, friends, you know, girl stuff. Then she'd fall asleep in my room. She stayed here pretty much every night, so in the end, our parents bought us bunk beds. But she then went and bragged about everything I told her to her classmates, so they'd think she's cool, since she got to hang out with seniors and knew their stories. One time, she leaked out the secret that my best friend Lee had a crush on Paul, and she told her friends that I was surely gonna be spring queen at the next prom. What? I didn't even think about trying out for that. Never! I'm not interested in that kind of attention. And obviously, the rumors got out. Lee stormed up to me, yelling and all, saying she never wanted to be friends again. I tried to explain things to her, but she didn't listen. And for the rest of the day, every time I walked across the hallway, the popular girls would smirk at me and say things like, Who do you think you are? Like, seriously, as if you could be spring queen? I hated this. I just wanted to have a normal, quiet life at school. I didn't like this attention, nor did I have any longing to be spring queen. This made me so mad. So later in the afternoon, I stormed into B's classroom during recess, dragged her aside, and told her to stop ruining my life with her big mouth. I didn't have much time to talk to her about exactly what had happened, because I had to return to class. But I made sure to make my point and threw her a dirty look before I left. She looked pretty scared. I stomped back to class, but my tantrum didn't last long because, during English Lit, my teacher paired me on a group project with two of my friends and Andy, the cutest guy ever! This was the perfect excuse to use the group study time to organize a meetup at my house. The plan was set. I just needed to come home, put on my cutest outfit, and wait for them to come over. I was so nervous that I didn't really mind about the feud with my sister anymore. I excitedly told her about Andy coming over, and she helped me tidy up my room and braid my hair. They arrived, and studying didn't last long. Soon, we were watching movies and playing games. Then B suggested we play Seven Minutes in Heaven. That's so childish, but the others seemed up for it. Besides, I figured it could work in my favor with Andy. We spun the bottle to decide, and when it was Andy's turn, B asked to spin it for him. Then she winked over at me and Andy. Then, to my horror, the bottle pointed at her. What was that? Is she stealing my crush too? This little brat. She and Andy went into the closet and after seven excruciating minutes, they walked out looking all smiley. I was so mad, but I kept my cool until they left. Then I screamed at B that she was a horrible sneaky girl and to stay away from me. It got so heated, mom had to come and tell me to stop. I slammed my bedroom door shut and even put my dresser in front of it so B couldn't come in. The next day, she tried apologizing to me, but I ignored her. She even left a candy bar on my pillow, but I just chucked it in the trash. To make matters worse, Andy approached me at school and went on about the fun he'd had at mine and how cool B was. What? So what exactly did those two do in the closet? This was awful. Then prom day came. I didn't have a date. Lee still wasn't talking to me, and trying to avoid B in my own house was draining. Then, Lee called me up excitedly and told me Paul had asked her to prom. I was so happy for her, and we made up. She invited me over to get ready for prom at hers. I packed my dress, my makeup, but my eyebrow pencil was missing. I mumbled, Ugh, B, as she must have taken mine again. I knew she was at swimming practice, so I went through her drawer to find my makeup stuff. Nothing. Then I spotted something under her pillow. It looked like the end of a black pencil. This must be it. I took it out, but it wasn't an eyebrow pencil. Just a normal pen. It was in the middle of a notebook. 
So curious. I pulled it out. That's when I glimpsed my name on the open page. So I picked it up to see what it was. It's her diary. I read through the first few pages. She said she loved me very much and that she was happy that she finally got to live in the same house as me. I found a specific page that was a little ripped. It was the day I yelled at her. I saw tears dried out on her words. She wrote how she really thought I was very beautiful and would win the Spring Queen title, and how she just wanted to help me and Andy get together, so she suggested the seven minutes game. And she tried to aim the bottle at me, but it went wrong. And that when she was in the closet with Andy, she was only saying nice things about me to him. And she also found out that Andy had feelings for me. Also, she wrote that sleeping alone was so scary, but she didn't want to bother me anymore. She said she'd ruined everything and wished she could move back to her old house. I felt so guilty, and I just cried all the way to Lee's place and later told her everything. I was not in the mood for prom anymore, so even though everyone complimented me on my dress, I couldn't enjoy myself. Andy came forward and asked me to dance, but I couldn't quit thinking about B. I apologized to Andy for my bad mood, and he was so understanding, we ended up taking a walk outside, and I vented to him about how I'd misunderstood my sister. Then, suddenly, I spotted her with friends at the photo booth at the entrance. They looked like they were having so much fun, except for her. She looked so sad. I grabbed her arm from behind. She turned around, shocked, then quickly stepped back and went to leave, but I stopped her and told her I was sorry. I hugged her, and we both cried, and continuously said sorry to each other. Then, I suddenly heard my name on the mic inside the venue. She then said, Go, go! They must be crowning you as Spring Queen right now! Told you so! Turns out, I wasn't Spring Queen, but I did make prom court, which I guess is kinda cool. I was wrong to ever be mad at B. She never meant to cause any harm. I know that now. Later that evening, Lee and Paul came over and thanked B as it was basically down to her that they were now together. Then Lee winked at Andy, who was standing next to me, and said, You should also thank B, because it looks like we're having another couple here. Talk about awkward! So we both just shrugged it off and pretended not to understand what she meant. We spent the rest of the night dancing and having a great time. It felt so good to have my best friend and my little sis back in my life. I've now realized that having Bella with me all the time isn't so bad. Yes, she's annoying at times, but all she wanted was to have her big sis around. And I guess I have to admit that I like having my little sis around too. Ah. Now, what better way is there to spend a Saturday afternoon than lying on the couch watching a feel-good movie with lots of snacks? Ugh. I suppose I better get that. O-M-G. Who is this? He's the most gorgeous boy I've ever seen in my life. I stared at him in open-mouthed amazement. But then I saw him gazing back at me and realized I needed to say something. Hey, how may I help you? Hi, I'm Jaden. My mom and I have just moved in next door. Oh, in that case, welcome to the neighborhood. Jaden smiled as he held a box out to me. W was this a g gift for me? Already? I took it from him and blushed out a thanks. I opened the box and saw that it was full of delicious looking cookies. My mom baked them. She finds that people tend to be far more welcoming when it involves cookies. We chatted for a bit longer. Then he said he had to go and help his mom unpack. Aww. Why did this moment have to end already? The next day at school, I couldn't wait to find my bestie Stella and tell her about my drop-dead gorgeous neighbor. But as it happens, she found me at my locker and immediately started gushing about this hot new boy. Hmm, I needed to see how handsome this guy was. My chance came at lunchtime when Stella pointed over at the new boy who was currently being pestered by Anna, this stuck-up girl from class. I squinted my eyes. O-M-G. The hot new boy was none other than Jaden. I watched on as Anna fluttered her eyelashes at him, then flicked her hair behind her back. Ugh. She needed to give the flirting a break. It was so tragic. Suddenly, Jaden saw me. 
smiled, then hurried over to me. Hi, Laura. Oh, boy, am I glad to see you. He leaned in close to my ear and whispered, That girl is kind of freaking me out. Please, can we get out of here? Then to my surprise, he took my hand and led me away. I could see the shocked look on Anna's face, and I couldn't help but smirk back at her. Ha! <laughs> Take that, Anna! He's holding my hand, not yours. Then after school, Jaden and I walked home together. Turns out, as well as being the hottest guy on the planet, he was also really sweet and funny. <sighs> back home, I saw Jaden's mom, Cynthia, watering her window box. On seeing us, she waved us over then insisted on inviting me inside for homemade lemonade. We all got on so well. Looks like I'm going to have a boyfriend soon, one whose mom loves me. <laughs> From then onward, Jaden and I hung out lots. We had lunch together, we went to the library together, and always walked home together. I was pretty sure the girls at school were super jealous, especially Anna. One day, during P.E., the teacher told us we were playing dodgeball and assorted us into two teams. Anna, who was on the opposite side, wouldn't quit aiming at me. I tried my best to dodge her throws, but bang! She got me! Now, listen to me. Guys like Jaden don't like ordinary girls like you. He's mine, so quit chasing him. Furious, I yelled. I'm not chasing him. He's already my boyfriend. Um, actually not. Yet, I was pretty sure Jaden liked me, too. Just you wait. He'll soon tire of you and come running to me. Ugh. Anna was so annoying. I needed to get my frustrations off my chest, so I ranted to Stella about her. Forget Anna. No one likes her anyway. As for Jaden, it's obvious he likes you. He's just new here and probably feels too shy to ask you out. Yeah, you're probably right. He must just be shy. But, ugh, I know Anna won't quit chasing him. Then you should make your relationship with Jaden official. Stella had a point. If Jaden was too shy to ask me out, then maybe I should take the initiative. Then Anna would have no choice but to back off. Ha! Huh. Tonight was the night. So I texted Jaden, I need your help with something. Let's meet at 8 p.m. by the slide in the park. But then he messaged back saying he couldn't meet tonight as he had to help his mom with something. Right that moment, my dad arrived home earlier than usual and announced that he was taking me and my sister Megan out for dinner. Ooh, this restaurant looked nice. I walked in alongside Megan and... Huh? What were Jaden and his mom doing here? Then my dad walked over to Cynthia, kissed her on the cheek, and said... Hello, honey. Jaden and I shared astonished looks. Then we peered at the adults for an explanation. Laura, Megan, this is Ms. Green, the lady I told you about. What? I mean, I knew Dad was dating a woman named Ms. Green, but I had no idea she was Jaden's mom. Then, before we knew what was happening, Dad got down on one knee and pulled out this diamond ring and asked her to marry him. And you know what? She said yes! Oh, no. No, 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 no! They can't marry! Because then Jaden will be my brother! Megan looked delighted and hugged them both, while I stared at Jaden in bewilderment. Don't get me wrong, I really want my dad to be happy, but... Why her? And what about me and Jaden? After that, Cynthia seemed to always be at our house, baking cakes, humming while she dusted and cleaned up, and exchanging gooey looks with my dad. Ew. Then one day, she insisted that Megan and I went wedding dress shopping with her. She tried on this one dress, and yeah, okay, she looked pretty good in it. But when she asked me what I thought about it, I just shook my head and said, Well, it's not very flattering, is it? She tried on several more dresses, but I managed to find fault with them all. Then, when I noticed how disheartened she looked, I patted her shoulder and said, 
Don't worry, Cynthia. You can always postpone the wedding until you find a suitable dress. She looked a bit taken aback, but then she just smiled at me and said, That's okay, Laura. I'm going to go with the first one. Ugh. Anyway, now the dress was chosen, so at least I could go home now, right? Wrong. As on the way home, we passed an arcade. Cynthia led us there and then excitedly challenged me to a game of air hockey. Then I said jokingly, Fine, I'll play, but if you lose, you don't deserve to be my mother. And guess what? She won! Ugh! And worse still, Megan wouldn't quit giving me dirty looks for the comments I'd made. Jeez, I was just joking. What is wrong with you today? I plopped down on the couch and blurted out everything. She'd take my side, right? Um, turns out, no, she wouldn't. What? You and Jaden aren't even official. But Dad loves Cynthia. They both deserve happiness. So stop being a brat about it. Then she stormed off to her room. Ugh, I feel like I'm going crazy. I have huge feelings towards Jaden, and I know he feels the same. So why can't my sister be mature enough to understand that and support me? I needed to vent to someone. Luckily for me, I had Stella. Why does no one care about my feelings? I can't be Jaden's sister. Um, sorry, Lara. I don't know what to say. Suddenly, from the nearby table came a lousy voice. So that's the reason why Jaden has to hang out with you? You're pathetic, Lara. Turns out we were so lost in conversation, we didn't notice Anna and her flock sitting at the table behind us. Actually, we've been into each other for ages. It's not our fault our parents made some dumb decision. Anyway, whether we can be together or not, it doesn't change the fact that you bore him so much that he'd choose watching paint dry over being with you. How dare you! She was about to grab my hair, but right at that moment, a hand stopped her. It was Jaden! That afternoon, on our walk home, I finally came clean to Jaden. I like you a lot. I have always been since I first met you. I know you like me too, but you think it'll be awkward because our parents are getting married. Maybe if we just tell- Laura, you're such a sweet girl. And I do like you. But just as a sister. What? How could he say that to me? He had to like me. Didn't he? Feeling an unexplainable amount of shame and embarrassment, I ran away from him. As I lay on my bed and rubbed my tear-stained eyes, all I could think about was how unfair this was. So, by the time Dad called me down for dinner, and I walked in and saw how happy he looked, my anger got the better of me and I yelled, I hate you, and I hate Cynthia! How dare you try and replace Mom! Then I rushed back to my room. You really upset Dad. You know that, right? I didn't answer. I was also upset, but no one seemed to care about my feelings. Dad said we come first, so if you really feel this strongly about it, then he'll cancel the wedding. To be honest, I'm real mad with you right now. So? What about me? You're so immature and selfish! I didn't understand how my own sister could be so uncaring. So I screamed out. So what? You don't care that mom's being replaced by some fake woman? And what about me? Why does no one care how I feel? Oh my god, Laura, for once, this isn't about you! Megan rolled her eyes at me, then stormed off. Finally, everyone quit going on about the stupid wedding. But why didn't I feel good about this? Cynthia didn't seem to be coming round to our house anymore, and I noticed how Dad's cooking seemed to get worse and worse, until he stopped altogether and just ordered takeout. Meanwhile, Jaden wasn't anywhere to be seen at school. Stella asked around to find out where he was, and turns out he'd left, as he was moving back to his old town. No way! After school, 
I rushed straight over to his house and barged inside to find him and his mum packing. Are you... moving away? <sighs> yeah. I moved here to settle down and start a new life with Randall. And this house is for Jaden's future. But the wedding's been cancelled, so... I quickly asked Jaden if we could talk outside. My mom's cried so much. Randall's her soulmate, and she can't stay around her if she can't be with him anymore. The most annoying part is that she agrees with him that the kids must come first. So, I hope you're happy now? Oh my god, what have I done? His words were like a stab to my gut. Oh no, this was all my fault. I was so obsessed with Jaden that I didn't stop to think about what was best for everyone else. Without saying another word, I ran back home and burst into the kitchen where Dad was drearily staring into his iced coffee. Dad, you deserve to be happy with Cynthia. So, please go and tell her how you feel before she leaves for good. But it was too late. Cynthia and Jaden had gone. Just kidding! <laughs> Nah. Actually, Dad managed to catch Cynthia just in time, and he told her how much he loves her and can't live without her. So, guess what? Yep, they got married, and now they're both happier than ever. I've learned the hard way that being selfish and inconsiderate of other people's feelings for my own gain just makes everyone miserable, including myself. So, now we're one big happy family. And I suppose having Jaden as a brother isn't actually so bad after all. Hey, Kat here again. Are you ready for the next part of my story? If you haven't seen the first two parts, then what are you doing? Go and watch them right now. But if you have seen them, do you remember what happened to me? I'm a tomboy, a fact which my mom hates. Then her fiancé Max moved in with his girly daughter Taylor, and mom clearly favored her over me. If this wasn't enough to deal with, I was then in an embarrassing situation at the mall while trying to be girly to impress this cute guy called Garrett who's into girly girls. So after the rescue of my best friend Harry and some help getting ready from my mom, I arranged to meet Garrett at the coffee shop so I could tell him exactly how I felt about him before his soccer team party. As I walked up the street to meet Garrett, I felt so happy. I'm sure it would be a surprise for him to see me dressed all girly, and he'd be into it. Then we'd kiss. Wow, that sounds great. I was the first one there, so I grabbed a hot chocolate and waited. Jeez, that five-minute wait felt like five years. Then he strolled through the door looking so casual but cute. He looked me up and down and then said, Um, Kat, you do know the party later is just a casual hangout? I kept my cool as I replied, Oh. This old dress? It's just something I threw on in a hurry. He ordered a drink, and we talked for a bit. I knew it was the only chance, either now or never, so I just came out with it. Look, Garrett, I think you're cool. Really cool, in fact. I have a crush on you. No, I think I like you a lot. He looked a little flustered, but surely this was totally normal, as he was just digesting my words, right? After a few minutes of silence, he gave me an awkward look as he said, Kat, I think you're great, but you're not my type. I just see you as one of the boys. I'm not his type? And he just sees me as a boy? I sat there completely heartbroken. Each word he said felt like a sharp knife stabbing into my little heart. I immediately stood up and asked him, What? You don't think I'm a girl? I'm in a dress, for goodness sake. If I'm not girly enough for you, then who is? He seemed a bit confused by my question, then reluctantly replied, Um, I'm into gentle girls. Who need me to protect? Um, like Taylor, for example. She's your sister, right? Could you help me and Taylor become a couple? What? Not only did he have the cheek to publicly reject me, but now he was admitting to me that he liked that Barbie doll? I yelled at him. You have to be kidding me. Out of all the girls in the world, you like Taylor? Then I stormed out of there, relieved that I'd worn ballet pumps over evil high heels. 
I arrived home to the smell of freshly baked scones. Then I saw my mom and Taylor baking together in the kitchen. I wasn't in the mood for cooking with Barbie hour, so I slammed the door shut and stomped up to my room. My mom appeared and shouted up the stairs to me, Hey, honey, how was your date? Why are you back so early? Seriously, it was pretty clear from my door slamming that it hadn't gone well. Why did she feel the need to humiliate me in front of Taylor, of all people? Get real, mom. I'm clearly upset. But then, what do you know? You only care about your shiny new daughter, Taylor. I ran into my room to change out of that damn dress I was wearing. Then I threw it down the stairs at her and yelled out, It's your dress, so take it back, and play dress-ups with her instead. My mom looked hurt, and at first, I felt a little bad. But then she shouted back, Why can't you just act like a normal girl and grow up? If you stopped being so selfish and made an effort with your appearance, your date might have gone better. Then Taylor continued, Don't be too much for mom. She means well. If that boy doesn't like you, then that's your issue, not hers. What the hell? How dare this nobody blame me? And why was she calling my mom, mom? I didn't call Max dad. Ugh, she was the worst person in the world. I hated her. I wanted her to go back to Barbie land and never come back. I stormed out of the house and took the bus to my dad's house. I tried to hold back my emotions so that I wouldn't burst into tears, but honestly, I had nothing. Garrett had brutally rejected me in favor of Taylor. I was still in a mood with Harry, and Mom had made it clear I was an embarrassment to her. The worst part was Harry had been right. I had lost myself. I was not myself anymore. I showed up at Dad's, and as soon as he opened the door, I burst into tears and hugged him. I told him everything and begged him to let me live with him. Dad tried to analyze everything for me. After a while, I calmed down and realized that, okay, maybe I was a bit sassy with Mom. Then Dad said, Actually, Kat, there's something I wanted to tell you. I really still love your mom and want you to help me get back with her. Whoa! I wasn't expecting that, but I was totally down for helping him. Goodbye to Barbie Taylor and hello to a proper family. Dad allowed me to stay for the night to let the tension between Mom and me calm down. His apartment was on the small side, so I had to sleep on the couch. But I didn't mind, as it meant I could stay up watching movies all night without Mom moaning at me that I needed my beauty sleep. I arrived home the next day to Mom and Max cleaning the house together. They were laughing and joking around and, yeah, okay, they looked really happy together. But Dad deserved this happiness more, right? I greeted both of them, but only Max replied. My mother ignored me like I was invisible. She must have still been mad at me. So all this tension wasn't a part of my get Dad back with Mom plan. So before I left for school, I walked up to Mom, said sorry, then kissed her on the cheek. Cheesy, but worth it. Then, as I was rummaging through my locker at school, I felt someone pat me on the shoulder. I turned around to see that it was Harry. Cat, I'm sorry, he said. I turned around and continued to look through my locker. I'd forgiven him already, but I wanted to make him sweat a bit first. Come on, Cat. I won't be able to study if I know you're mad at me, and my grades will suffer. I laughed and said, take me out for ice cream after school and I may consider forgiving you. I think I can manage that. He smiled at me. After school, we went to the ice cream shop nearby. My mood was so good, and I told Harry all about my plan to get Dad back with Mom. He wasn't so sure about it, but regardless of this, he promised to have my back. So, I had an ally. And the plan to heal my parents' feelings officially began. First, I invited Dad over for dinner. Mom wasn't overly impressed, but she couldn't say no. After all, he was my dad. During the meal, I went on about past stories, such as the time we all went on vacation together for my seventh birthday, and Dad lost his swimming trunks in the sea. My parents and Max just laughed, but I could make out the annoyed look on Taylor's face. After the meal, we watched TV together, and Taylor volunteered to make drinks for everyone. Then she brought out five glasses of orange juice. Dad took a large sip of his, then immediately spit it out all over his clothes and rushed to the toilet. Turns out, she'd put mustard in my dad's glass, but neither Max nor Mom said anything about it. Damn little Taylor. 
Then one night, when I knew that Mom and Max were going on a private date, I deliberately hid Max's key. By the time they found them in the plant pot two hours later, they'd missed their time slot. Talk about success! Another day, my mom suggested going on a picnic, so I immediately called Harry and my dad and invited them to join. Then, while we were in the park waiting for Harry to show up, I saw Garrett walking over, hand in hand, with Taylor. Talk about awkward. Garrett couldn't even meet my eye, and I just wanted the ground to swallow me up. Mom asked them how long they'd been together. She said two weeks, so I did the math. O-M-G. That meant they got together on the day I confessed my feelings towards him. Whatever. I was so over Garrett. Although I have to admit, I was relieved when I saw Harry walking over with a basket full of my favorite foods. Taylor kept asking Garrett to feed her. Ew. It was so awkward. When Harry saw me staring at the couple with bullet-like eyes, he so quickly passed me a slice of chocolate cake. A while later, I asked Harry to help me take some photos. Then I quickly dragged Dad and Mom to take family pictures. I could see Dad was enjoying standing next to her, and I heard him tell her that she looked beautiful. Good one, Dad. Only Taylor wasn't having any of it. She immediately led Max over and pushed me out of the way so he could stand next to Mom. I stood next to Taylor, and before Harry counted to three, I flipped Taylor's hair and deliberately stood over her. She glared at me. But I'm on top of the world, sucker. Anyway, I felt so good after that picnic, and I even thought that the day when Dad returned home would be soon. But a few days later during dinner, Mom and Max went on about what starters they wanted at their wedding. What? She still wanted to marry Max? So what about my dad? I immediately showed my annoyance, skipped my half-eaten meal, and stormed up to my room. I sat in my room, looked back at the picnic photos, and thought about my next plan. Then, I heard a knock on the door. It was Max. Cat, I have something important to tell you, he said with a sad voice. Uh Uh-oh, this couldn't be good. Could it? So, in the first part of my story, my parents set me up on some blind dates. First, there was Trent, who ended up being gay, so that didn't work out. And then I met Corey, who wasn't far from being called my worst enemy. We hated each other, but still, he made me go on dates with him. And then it turned out he was also gay, and that Trent was actually his ex. Corey begged me to help him get Trent back. So let's see how Trent will react to this. I decided to casually ask Trent about his past relationships and stuff to see if he'd bring Corey up. He said he'd been so badly betrayed by his ex and that he still hadn't forgiven him for it. Clearly, he was talking about Corey. I didn't know what to do. It was killing me to see how miserable they both were. Seeing how Corey desperately wanted Trent back made me realize that he had changed. If he was given one more chance, he would never risk losing Trent a second time. So I decided to help them get back together. I told Corey about it first, and I have never seen him look so happy. And after that, we started getting on pretty well, because we didn't have to pretend to be dating anymore. We could just be ourselves. And guess what? He's not actually that bad. In fact, he was just like me, having to put up with his parents setting him up on stupid dates. He even told my parents that I was such an amazing girl. And after that, my parents started to respect me more. The only thing was, I couldn't let Trent know about my plan. In fact, Trent didn't even know that Corey and I knew each other. But from the way Trent spoke about Corey, I knew he still had feelings for him too. So all I had to do was set up a date for them and let fate handle the rest. I asked Trent to meet me for dinner and arranged with Corey to secretly show up later. But as soon as Trent saw Corey, his face went bright red. And within a second flat, he was furious. He stood up and started yelling at us both and even pushed Corey out of the way as he stormed out. Every single person in the restaurant was staring at us, and I even heard some old couple whispering that I was clearly two-timing these guys, and I'd just been caught, and how embarrassing that was. Trent was really mad at me after that. 
So I had to try and get him to forgive me and at the same time, try and persuade him to give it another go with Corey. I knew that Trent had a sweet tooth, so I started making cupcakes and cookies and leaving them on his doorstep. He never answered the door no matter how many times I knocked. And one time I left a three-tiered chocolate cake at his door and I overheard his neighbors talking. One of them said, oh, when will she stop? What a desperate gold digger. And then the other looked at me and started shaking her head. She said, she clearly has no dignity. What kind of girl chases a boy like that? I was so embarrassed. I realized how needy I must have looked. So I ran back to my car, but before I got in, Trent came running after me. He had heard the neighbors too, and he'd realized how hard I'd been trying. He said to me, Crystal, stop it already. You keep trying to fix things that were never your fault to begin with. Well, at least he'd spoken to me again. I told him I was sorry, and I just missed hanging out with him. So he said he forgave me, but there was one more thing he wanted. I replied to him with the biggest smile on my face. Sure, anything for you, Trent. I'm all yours for today. Okay then, let's go to the theme park. It's been a while, and I need something to relieve all this stress. He said... I'm pretty sure I started to sweat a little upon hearing that because I'm literally petrified of heights. So we went there and went on all the rides that Trent wanted to. And I had to close my eyes the whole time and spent most of the day clinging on to him out of fear. But Trent seemed to have a great time and I was just glad to make him happy again. That was all that mattered. After that day, I was able to bring up Corey again and I told him that he didn't have to take him back but maybe he could just open his heart a little and give Corey a chance to explain himself. He reluctantly agreed, just so that I'd stop going on and on about it. And he did give him a chance. Well, not really a chance, but he did keep the gifts Corey sent instead of sending them right back. And he stopped blocking his number. They even started talking again. Anytime Trent replied to Corey, Corey would call me and tell me, and he'd be so excited. And they even met up to have a serious chat about what had happened. Now there's no more bad blood between them, and all that was left to do was for Corey to make a move to win Trent back. Corey started to shower Trent in love. He even bought him an annual pass to the theme park and backstage passes to his favorite singer. But still, Trent wouldn't budge. He was being nice to Corey, but he didn't seem to want to date him again, which was so weird. What was going on? Had Trent met another guy already? One day, I met up with Trent to talk over a drink. I jokingly asked him, Hey, are you seeing another guy? What about Corey? I mean, I know he hurt you in the past, but he's changed now. And honestly, you two were miserable before. Now that he's back in your life, you seem so much happier. I waited for him to reply, but... He just stared at me, which was really weird, and it made me blush. Had I just stepped out of line? I said to him, well then, come on, spill the beans. Who is he? Then he smirked and downed his drink, and he said, the reason I'm so much happier is because, yes, I have met someone. I knew it! I interrupted. Then I realized he wasn't finished speaking. He continued, but it's not a guy. It's a girl. And she's the reason why I can't be with Corey again. She made me realize that I'm actually bisexual. And I was surprised. I mean, I really loved Corey. So this girl kind of came out of nowhere and has blown me away with how incredible she is. I couldn't believe it. Oh my god, who is she? I said laughing. And then he went bright red and said, Crystal, come on. It's you. Duh. What, what? I was too shocked to even reply. My heart was beating so fast. Trent liked me? Honestly, I was so confused. I mean, Trent was gay. Why would he like me? I felt so awkward and I could feel his eyes on me. I knew he was waiting for me to say something. I looked up for a second and our eyes met and the tension in the air was so intense. I just couldn't stand it. I made up an excuse, saying I felt tired and that I needed to go home. Trent looked a bit upset, but still offered to drive me home. I turned him down, though, and said I'd take an Uber. I just needed some alone time. I couldn't stop thinking about what he'd said. It actually made sense. We had so much fun together. 
But because I'd known he was gay, I'd never really looked at him as boyfriend material. But what if he wasn't gay? I mean, could we be together? The more I thought about it, the more I realized I liked him too. But I had to forget about those feelings because what about Corey? I couldn't just steal the love of his life like that. He'd be heartbroken. I didn't sleep a wink that night. All kinds of questions constantly popped up in my head. The next day, Trent texted me first, asking, Did you sleep well last night? I hope what I said last night didn't keep you up all night. With a smiley face, I replied, Actually, I was awake the whole night. I've thought a lot about my feelings, but Trent, I don't want to hurt Corey. We can't do this. He then replied, Don't think too much. That doesn't matter. Just answer this one question. Do you have feelings for me? Just say yes or no. I don't know what was going through my mind, but at that moment, I guess I was just tired of things being so complicated. So I typed yes, then hit send. Okay, so now Trent knew I had feelings for him too, and he sounded so happy. He said I shouldn't worry and that we could work this out as long as our feelings were mutual. A few days later, Trent said he'd meet up with Corey to talk to him. I was way too anxious to ask Trent how it went, but then at midnight, Corey called me. I was terrified to answer. I knew he would yell at me, but to my complete surprise, he didn't. He sounded calm and said Trent had told him everything and that if I truly had feelings for him, I should go for it. He said, I've spent years away from the one I love, and I don't want the same thing to happen to you and Trent. It's too painful. You both deserve to be happy. Plus, you helped me so much. Thanks to you, I managed to clear things up with Trent, and just having him back in my life, even as a friend, is good enough for me. I'll find someone else, and it'll make me so happy to know you two are happy. I was so touched by what he said, I couldn't even respond. I just started crying and told him he'd definitely meet someone amazing soon. Even he sounded choked up, but he tried to hide it by laughing and calling me a crybaby. Now that I had his support, I decided to give it a go with Trent. We went on a date, and it was so fun. Seeing as it wasn't our first time hanging out, we were so comfortable around each other. And now that I knew he was interested in me, I noticed how much he gave me butterflies. It was amazing. Now we're officially a couple. Turns out my parents are pretty good at playing Cupid, right? <laughs> Finally, after an 11-hour flight, I arrived at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. It's awesome! I can't wait to see my mom. You see, my dad's French and my mom's American. We used to all live together in France, but then they split up and mom moved back here. Of course, I've talked to her on FaceTime and stuff, but this will be the first time I've properly seen her in five years! I haven't visited before because mom's a super successful businesswoman and she works really hard. That meant she wouldn't have the time to provide me with the attention I needed. But now that I'm 16 and I can look after myself, I'm finally able to visit. So thanks to my dad and stepmom for my plane ticket birthday present, I'm now in sunny LA for a whole month. Not only do I get to spend time with mom, but I also get to chill out in her enormous villa. Ah, <sighs> bliss. But first, let's get all my luggage, then find a taxi to my mom's. Yeah, unfortunately, she couldn't come to pick me up since she had some work to do. But no problem, I can handle this myself. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. It's been half an hour and my luggage was nowhere to be seen. Then, this handsome guy approached me and said, Hey, looks like your luggage has gone AWOL. Do you need any help? Cute and helpful. Hmm... I could totally get used to U.S. guys. I showed him my ticket, and turns out, I was waiting at the wrong carousel. Oops. After guiding me to the correct one, this guy, whose name I found out was Zach, even pulled my luggage down for me. But one of my cases got stuck and burst open, causing everything to tumble out. Girl, it's not your lucky day, is it? He burst out laughing. Oh well, at least it wasn't all bad. I mean, a cute guy had rescued me, right?
He helped me pick up my things, then he offered to drive me to my mom's house. After some 30 minutes, he began to slow down. I looked out the window and, oh my god, this is the chicest villa ever. The pool, the tennis court, the palm trees. It was exactly like a movie star home. I was gawping at the villa when suddenly I heard a car engine sound. Startled, I turned around to see Zack zooming away. My suitcases! I yelled. Ugh, my laptop and iPad were in there too. Oh God, why is this happening to me? And on my very first day in the US? At least I still had my phone and passport with me. Phew. So I called my mom. Needless to say, I was a distraught mess when she arrived. Who'd have thought that such a kind-looking guy would turn out to be a thief? Anyways, my mom could buy me new clothes and things, and I could still have an amazing time in her villa, right? Mom led me to my room and told me to get some rest. After that disaster, I was dead exhausted, so I quickly fell asleep on the comfiest bed ever. When I awoke, it was dark outside. I realized I hadn't eaten anything since the flight, so I went downstairs and checked the fridge and cupboards. Huh? They were all empty. I was still digging around in the kitchen when my mom returned with some burgers. Sweetie, I only got back from my business trip yesterday, so I haven't had time to go to the grocery store. Let's just eat fast food today, okay? I didn't mind, as it was awesome to have dinner with my mom again after such a long time. I took a look around the room. There was barely any furniture here. My mom said that's minimalism. A trendy lifestyle in LA nowadays. Less is more. How cool is that? The next morning we went out, but what's with that old rusty car? Seeing my confused look, she quickly explained that this was only temporary as her car was being serviced. But then mom couldn't get the garage door to open. Turns out, normally she had her own chauffeur. But since I've traveled thousands of miles to visit her, she wanted to drive herself. Huh? How sweet. In the following days, my mom and I enjoyed ourselves in LA. Sunbathing by the pool, spa days, shopping. This is definitely the best vacation of my life. At least until that morning, I was awoken by a loud quarrel. Looking down from the stairs, I saw mom in the living room with a strange woman. She was pointing at the couch. Jeez, that's where I spilled soy sauce yesterday while eating sushi. Then mom appeared and sounded flustered. She told me to quickly pack my things as we were leaving. Um, mom, is there something wrong? Oh, nothing, sweetie. It's just that the couch is dirty, so let's just get someone in to clean the entire villa. Wow, mom would deep clean the whole house just because of a soy sauce stain? How rich is she? So, where will we stay this time? A luxurious five-star hotel? Or a magnificent mansion in Beverly Hills? <sighs> but then the car came to a stop in front of some shabby apartment building. Huh? This couldn't be right. Mom told me this was her friend's spare apartment, so we would stay here a few days for convenience. Elena, it's probably best if you stay away from the people in this area. They don't have the same lifestyle as us. You know what I mean. Ugh. Yeah. This place was the opposite of the villa. Cramped room, hard bed, and the bathroom didn't even have a bathtub. Since moving here, mom didn't take me out anymore. In the evenings, she dressed up all elegantly and went out to her fancy work meetings. On one such evening, I was sitting alone watching YouTube, munching on french fries for the fifth time this week, when there was a knock on the door. I opened it, and standing there was a scruffy guy, claiming to be Frankie, the landlord's son. I told him there must be a mistake, as we were only here for a few days. Then I went to close the door, but he blocked it with his foot. Miss Anita has rented this apartment for two years. What do you mean a few days? I just saw her take a cab at the front door. Don't lie to me. No, my mom is a successful businesswoman who has a villa in Brentwood Park. Then you must have mistaken your mom for someone else. In short... Remind your businesswoman mom to pay the rent. Then he sneered and walked away. How dare he say that? And why did I keep on running into jerks? Ugh! When mom returned, 
I told her what had happened. I thought she'd find it funny or something, but nope. Instead, she got really mad. You shouldn't have opened the door to him. I told you not to socialize with the people here. Okay, hearing made-up lies about yourself like that must suck, but did she have to be so furious about it? The next morning, I was drinking tea on the balcony when suddenly I saw a familiar face passing by down the street. My god, it was the jerk from the airport. Zack! That thief! I shouted, rushing down, but when I got there, he disappeared. I was still exasperated when a voice came from behind. What on earth are you doing screaming this early in the morning? I turned around to see Frankie leaning against the wall with his arms folded. None of your business, swindler. Huh? Swindler? What do you mean? Quit lying. I already told my mom all about you trying to con money out of me. Hmm, is that so? So, you think I'm the liar? Before I could answer that provoking question, I heard my mom's voice calling down from the balcony. Hey, rich girl, if you want a reality check, I suggest you come meet me tonight, and we'll go follow your mom. Mom appeared and, frowning, asked me why I was talking to Frankie. I blurted out something about asking for directions, then quickly entered the room and closed the door. Frankie was clearly a thieving, lying jerk, right? But then, why were his words lingering in my mind? I had noticed a few strange things, such as when we were at the villa, I asked mom where the cutlery was, but she couldn't remember. But then in this apartment, she immediately got it. Plus, why was there a photo of her in the bedroom when this was her friend's place? That night, when mom was getting ready to go out again, I spotted her necklace. Only, it was actually my necklace. The one that had been stolen along with the rest of my stuff. My dad got that necklace custom made just for me, so it was a one of a kind, but why did mom have it? I complimented her on it and asked her where she'd got it from. Blushing, she excitedly told me that this rich man she'd just started dating had bought it for her. Then she said he was taking her for dinner tonight. I forced a smile, but my head was filled with questions. Who really was... Mom? I secretly followed my mom down the street. Suddenly, a hand patted my shoulder. Let's go. I turned around and it was Frankie. Without saying anything, I nodded and quickly got into his car and we followed Mom's taxi. Hold on. Isn't that the villa we stayed in before? After a while, a luxury car arrived, taking my mom to a nearby expensive restaurant. We peered through the glass wall. There she was. My mom was sitting there, smiling and talking with some man in a suit. Was she pretending to live in that villa to trick that man? Was my mom a gold digger? I couldn't watch any more of this, so I pulled on Frankie's arm. But weirdly, he seemed to be as shocked as I was. Um, wasn't this your idea? So why the pale face? He just shook his head and took me home. We waited in the apartment for Mom to return, and oh boy, it was tense. Around midnight, we heard the door open, and Mom walked in and looked at us in alarm. She started shooing Frankie out of there, but I interrupted her. Mom, I know everything. You've lived here for two years. You're poor. And you scam rich men. Sweetie, it's not like that. Please calm down and I'll explain everything to you. So, it turns out, after divorcing my dad, she was determined to go back to the U.S. and succeed at business. But she failed, and she was so embarrassed she lied to me and dad. Then when she heard that I was coming to visit, she spent the little savings she had on renting a swanky villa for me. But when I accidentally spilled soy sauce on that expensive couch, she couldn't afford to fix it. So we were kicked out. As for the man I was with tonight, I ran into him while walking outside the villa. He's rich and nice. He likes me and I like him too. But what about that necklace? Mom, it's actually mine. It was in my stolen suitcase. My mom gave me a confused look. But before she could say anything, Frankie blurted out, That man's a fraud. Mom and I gaped at Frankie as he turned to me and said, I'm sorry, but I think you guys need to know the truth. 
Then Frankie told us how that man was none other than Zack's dad. After taking me back to the villa, Zack figured my mom was rich, so he persuaded his dad to come and flirt with her. But how did you dig up the dirt on these guys? Because I know Zack. When I saw Lana chasing him, I knew he'd stolen from her. But he's my friend. Great, so you've both been lying to me. Then I rushed into my room, locked the door, and burst into tears. The next morning, Mom knocked on my door, but I ignored her. Lana, I get that you're upset with me, but I've left a sandwich here, so please at least eat something. I'm really sorry. Just wanted to be the perfect mother for you. Her words caused me to sob all over again. But I can say, from the bottom of my heart, I feel sorry for her. After that, I opened the door and hugged her tightly, and then we both blubbered into each other's arms. I'm leaving L.A. today, with Mum. She's moving back to France with me, where she can start afresh. While I was dragging my suitcase to the taxi, Frankie appeared and apologized to me. I just shrugged and told him it didn't matter anymore. I mean, at least he came clean in the end and saved my mom from that swindler. Hey, rich girl, good luck. And, um, feel free to keep in touch. So, what now? Well, mom is settling back into French life. She has a new job and a chic apartment. I go and stay with her each weekend, and it's good to finally spend time with the real her. As for Frankie, well, we send each other lots of Snapchats. So, okay, maybe I kind of like him. I'm planning to visit him in the summer. Hopefully my next trip to the U.S. won't be as crazy as my last one. <laughs> no one told me it's this windy up here. I'll probably be wiped off of Earth before I could wipe all these windows. It's okay, Harper. Remember, you're doing this for Aaron. Just a bit of tough work for now, but imagine the incredible time you'll be having at the concert. Imagine, oh my god, Aaron and her? Hold up, let's start from the top. Hi, I'm Harper, the biggest fan of the greatest boy band, The Statics, especially their rapper Aaron. I turned 18 not long ago, and I'm taking a gap year to find my true passion. To be honest, I'm not really interested in anything. The only thing that makes me feel alive right now is fangirling, following my boys around, concerts, touring, etc. But after months of that, I'm totally broke. Not to mention Aaron's having his solo debut album. So, having no choice, I asked my super sweet boyfriend Kirk to lend me some money. But, again, all you ever did was spend relentlessly on this trash. You don't study, nor get a job. How are you expecting to afford it all? Do these idols feed you or give you a roof over your head? I don't think so. I can't help you forever either. Trash? He called my passion trash? Excuse me, I asked for a loan. Not like I was robbing him. He wasn't like this the other times. Finally showing his true self, huh? Fine, I don't need an unsupportive boyfriend. Anyone that stands between me and my happiness can get lost. So, we're over. Whatever. But wait, I still need to come inside. As Kyra's bestie, not as your girlfriend. You might be wondering what kind of relationships I have going on here. Well, I actually befriended Kyra first. We were both ecstatic. Fandom of the statics. If you know, you know. Fangirl's bond is stronger than any friendship. Her mom works for a big press, so she sometimes could even get us access to shows. Cool, right? So I was always around her place. One thing led to another. Me and her brother fell in stupid love, but not anymore. Have you heard about Aaron's new album? Apparently, it will be followed by a group concert right downtown New York. We can ask Kirk to give us a ride. It will be super fun. Oh, don't want to burst your bubble, but I just broke up with Kirk. Four minutes, 36 seconds ago? No way! Yes way! I told her how ridiculous her brother was, but she still tried to find excuses for him, hoping to mend us back together. But sorry, this heart of mine has casted the dice. It's entirely dedicated to Aaron now. No more dumb boyfriend. And that's how I ended up taking on this dangerous job. Its high salary could get me boxes of albums and a concert ticket even. But what am I getting instead? My beloved idol arms in arms with a singer I hate the most on earth, Bianca. Aaron and Bianca rushed to the window and dragged me inside. Please don't let anyone know this. What do you want? Autograph? VIP ticket? Please, you probably know our two fandoms are like water and oil. They already opposed us so badly over a collab last time. 
Yeah, of course I know, because I was the one who opposed. Seriously, what does Erin see in this girl? She always says controversial stuff, gets caught in dating rumors with all guys on Earth, parties 24-7, and her songs suck. But on a second thought, it's not every day to have the two hottest celebrities on their knees before me like this. Maybe I should act wisely. Either way, this is the lifetime opportunity for me stepping into Erin's life, isn't it? Okay, I'll keep a secret on one condition. Let me be the manager of Bianca. Bianca's manager? Who's looking for me? Wait, who are you? But he didn't even bother to wait for my answer and started stacking out bunches of stuff for Bianca to sign. Being a manager ain't a joke. See, Will's been doing this for years and still struggling. Well then, more reason for me to step in. So I walked over to give him a hand. This poster is mid. Next time, let me handle it. Trust me, I've designed countless stuff for fan events. The title track this time is a bop, but without a good promotion, it turned into a flop. I suggest you make some TikTok challenge for it. I'm a girl Bianca's age. I for sure understand her and the fans more than you. I'll be useful. Right, guys? Y yeah sure. She has a point, Will. You do need an assistant. Right then, Will had a phone call. Seemed urgent. After hanging up, he turned to me. Fine. It's true that I'm overloaded. I have to check stuff at the venue right now, but Bianca has schedules at the radio station in an hour. Can you get her there? Sir, yes sir. Just like that, I helped Will around, and it's safe to say I was basically Bianca's sub-manager. Life was pretty sweet. I got to tag along to shows for free, while keeping an eye on my love rival. I sure enjoyed playing God with my new puppet. Everything Bianca eats has to get my approval. Bye-bye, yummy tacos and burgers. She's only allowed to use the phone at certain times of the day. Stop texting boys and start working on your terrible music, honey. Then tell those annoying boys to stop bothering me. Even her sleep is strictly fixed, just because I love seeing her suffer. <laughs> And I make sure her schedule is packed. Vocal training, dance practice, filming content. Girl, you have a lot to work on. But on days where she worked with the statics, I'd let her off a little. Still, that doesn't mean these two could flirt under my nose. Seriously, it's like you guys are begging to get caught. Think about your future. This dumb fling won't matter a bit the day your career is on the edge of failing, won't it? Ha, <laughs> I'd make a good manager, right? But I occasionally saw Liam, another member of Statics, being way too chatty with Bianca. Well, as long as it's not my Aaron. But I know someone who wouldn't like this. Kyra, as Liam's her bias. <laughs> I guess the rumors are true. Liam is a playboy. And to prevent Aaron from getting caught in the same thing, I accidentally arranged Bianca's schedule to be 100% off with Aaron's, so they couldn't meet up. But Bianca still asked me to bring him gifts often, and surprisingly, Aaron wasn't too upset about his girlfriend not showing up. I guess I can get him in another level that Bianca couldn't. We soon talk a lot and hang out also, and he literally blurted out about how Bianca was so uptight, how some of her annoying habits gave him the ick, and that being with me was so much more comfortable. Uh-oh, sounds like love's fading. <laughs> on the other hand, Bianca was extra upset that they still couldn't date on their anniversary. Not on me, though. Aaron himself didn't want to see her and made excuses about how paparazzi had been up in his grill because he's been doing so well lately. But Bianca has had enough with this all. She wanted to go public. I heard her talking to Aaron on the phone about it. No, that's not gonna happen. I have to be a step ahead. I immediately searched for a photo, then posted it anonymously on a fan forum. If Aaron goes public with anyone, it's gotta be me. But oh boy, maybe I've not thought this through. What was I even thinking? The next day, the internet went crazy and it's all negative comments. Thankfully, Aaron's side has spoken up and calmed it down by fabricating a story about how this was from a long long time ago. And it was his first love, blah, blah. Anything, as long as things go down. I haven't even finished my sigh of relief. Then, out of nowhere, Aaron's stomping into our studio looking furious. R.I.P. me. Bianca, have you lost your mind? I told you I did not agree. Why did you post our photo? Are you trying to sabotage me? Sorry that you don't have a career so you can act careless all you want. But I do. I have my reputation and an army of stupid fangirls to please. I was frozen, as well as Bianca. Right then, a call came from Kyra. I swiftly sneaked out to take it. It's you, right? The lucky girl in the photo? I can tell by just one look. Last time we talked, you only mentioned seeing Bianca in real life or something. When did Aaron come into the picture? How could you not tell me? I was dumbfounded. Didn't know how to handle this. I mumbled out a few words so Kyra would keep this a secret and that we'd talk later. Okay, gotcha. But then help me meet my Liam, please. What? No, trust me, he's a player. They all are. Get over him. 
So Kyra recognized me that easily, but why Aaron didn't? He even mistook me with his so-called girlfriend, Bianca. That picture was also taken at the secret balcony of his penthouse that he swore he'd never taken anyone there before. Having too much on my mind, I wandered to his place, but ran into... Liam? He's talking to a girl. She wiped her tears, then left. I should get going. Don't want to mess with another player right now. Harper! What? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone about that 400th girlfriend of yours. Correct, it's the 400th girlfriend, but not of mine. Turns out, that girl's also a victim of Aaron the Heartbreaker, not Liam. Liam has always been the one who's cleaning after his mess, making sure the girls are all right and won't do anything harmful to the band's reputation. Probably that's why Public labeled me as the player. I always got caught up with these heartbroken girls. (laughs) And now you... What do you mean? I'm okay. Come on, I know you also got tangled in Aaron's love web. I'm sorry, I could have warned you earlier. I've been trying to hint it to Bianca, but the girl was too head over heels for him. I felt so stupid for thinking I could live that fantasy of being Aaron's girl so easily. All this time, we all blindly put Aaron on a pedestal, while letting Liam be wrongly accused of all the things he never did. Through Liam, I found out that the Statics has been having a problem. Aaron wanted to leave the group because he thought they were a burden and he'd do better on his own. But the rest knew that it would break the fans hard if one of them left, so they've compromised by letting Aaron have a solo album while still staying with the group. Oh no, kick that jerk out now. As a representative of Ecstatic, I can assure you that we won't be sad if we know what an awful person he is. We'll show him the door. Glad to hear that. Now, about Bianca, do you know how to break this to her in the best way? It's hard, but ugly truth is the only way. So the next day, we went to see Bianca together, told her all about how much of a jerk Aaron is, all the girls he's been seeing, all the bad-mouthing about her, he said. Surprisingly, she took it better than we thought. Thank you, too, for looking out for me. I know, I know he's bad, but I thought I'd been able to change him. But yesterday, when he came throwing a fit at me, I realized that I deserved better. Oh, poor Bianca. I really owe her a zillion apologies. I asked Liam to give us a minute and came clean to her on everything. On the photo I posted, on how I intentionally got in between the relationship, on my dumb rules just to get the better of her. I'm truly sorry. I'm just a Tolulu fangirl after all. I'm really sad to hear that because at some point I did consider you a friend. Especially your ridiculous roles. It helped me a lot. Look, you kept me on a strict diet, helped me get a healthy sleep schedule, made me practice more, stay off my phone. No more doom scrolling and obsessing over hateful comments. I can assure that you've helped me become a better artist and human overall, even though it's by accident. You are seriously too nice. How come I spent all these years hating on you? I'm sorry, and I don't think I should be around here anymore. I'd better go back to my normal life. Take care, Bianca. Bianca gave me a tight hug and said that she hoped I'd still come to her concert next week as she'd perform the dance number we created together. Mm Mm-hmm. Liam was nice enough to accompany me to Bianca's concert. I did ask Kyra if she wanted to come along, but she was all cranky. Bianca's concert? Are you an ecstatic anymore, Harper? She's our enemy. (laughs) Heh, kiddo. If only she could see past the hate. She could have met her Liam now. The show was going on smoothly. Bianca perfected our dance routine. I was so proud. But as she went to get ready for the next song, a strange VCR got played. I'm a selfish fanatic. A friend's betrayal. A gold digger. A Delulu. And on screen were pictures of me. No! Is this why Bianca insisted I come? Is this her paying back? Or is this Aaron's? Or Liam's? Suddenly, Bianca on the mic snapped me out of the panic attack. Uh, ahem. And I'm all the worst things without your love. Ladies and gentlemen, your favorite track for my second album, Here's Without You. Everyone cheered loudly, but a voice behind me took me aback. No, guys! That's not what the video's about! The lunatic is here! This one! Har- Oh my god! Liam! I- Liam quickly shushed her and we dragged her outside. Turned out my dearest sister from another mother did this to me. Why? I hate you. I know everything now. Don't forget who I am. Nothing in this fandom could be hidden from me. You got to befriend the boys, but ghosted me because you want them all to yourself, huh? After everything we've been through, all the shows my mom helped you get in, you bewitched Aaron, sided with Bianca, then called my Liam a player. But look who you're with now. On top of that, you dumped my brother for a stupid reason. The player here is you. This is a mess, and it's really my fault. I should have filled Kyra in on everything sooner. Seeing her right now reminds me of the exact same person I was just last week. The same hot-headed, immature fan. I couldn't blame her. I apologized and told her everything. And with her dearest Liam's help, Kyra, though still mad, started to be more understanding. 
I love you, and I hope you will soon see things the way I do now. Idols are also humans. They're not all glitters and gold, so we can't expect them to be all perfect, then refuse to see their wrongdoings, or nitpicking trivial things just because it's not up to our expectations. Let's both be a better ecstatic from now, okay? It's been six months since then. I can say that things are definitely for the better now. It's the first performance of the static since they parted ways with Aaron after his real face got exposed. Yes, that happened. Now look, it seems like the crowd has no problem with dumping that troublemaker either. And me? Normally I'd be here as an ecstatic, but not today. I'm now working part-time while studying to get proper certification on talent management. I realized that I did enjoy working with Bianca and I actually had a knack for it, so I'm going to make a career out of it. Now, excuse me, guys. May I get my manager back? It's showtime. Bye!